One, welcome to this day. Good morning. Today is Thursday, June 20th, and it is National Vanilla Milkshake Day. And I'm sorry, I didn't have time to go to McDonald's right, this morning to get that's okay. One. We'll tell you about that in just a bit. All right. Uh, today, we're going to bring you a segment from Hogue. And also from our social service department, we have Dustin Arbuckle. And Dustin is the liaison with uh, Memorial Care Saddleback Medical Center. And along with him will be Susan Thomas, and she is with the foundation of Laguna Woods Village. So we're going to be talking about their fall prevention program. Also, we have a couple guests on from the Golden Girls Dance Troupe that are having their show coming up, I think, next weekend. And uh, then Erica will be here with the Globe. Our meetings for today, we have the GRF Agenda Prep Meeting, which will be in the Willow Room at 930. Then we have the United Architectural Controls and Standards Meeting, which will be in the Elm Room at also at 930. And then we have the Mutual 50 Board Meeting, which will be at the Key Club Towers at 2 o'clock. All right, so the first time the term milkshake was used in print was in 1885. The milkshake was a concoction of cream, eggs, and believe it or not, whiskey which was often served with other alcoholic tonics, such as lemonades and soda waters. By the 1900s, a milkshake was often referred to as wholesome drinks made with chocolate, strawberry, or vanilla syrups. The milkshake made it into the mainstream when in 1922, a Walgreens employee in Chicago, Ivar Pop Coulson, took an old-fashioned malted milk, milk, chocolate, and malt, and added two scoops of ice cream and it, it was believed that because he did that, he, he had run out of ice, so he added ice cream to it. He created a drink which became popular at a surprising rate and soon becoming a high demand drink for young adults around the country. Now, if you see here in this uh, photo, on the left hand <coughs> side, we have a very old fashioned uh, milkshake maker, and on the right, is an actor who you may or may not recognize. And then the automation of milkshakes developed in the 1930s, as you can see there, after the invention of the Freon cooled refrigerators provided a safe, reliable way of automatically making and dispensing ice cream. In 1950, a milkshake machine salesman named Ray Kroc bought exclusive rights to a milkshake maker from inventor Earl Prince and went on to use automated milkshake machines to speed up production at McDonald's. So there you go. The history of the milkshake. <laughs> yes, Get very interesting. I had uh, some friends many, many years ago. They were from uh, Rhode Island and they used to call them fraps because that's what they called them back there. And I was like, what the heck is a frap? They go, well, it's a milkshake. But the difference was what they said is that the frap was, um, had um, an egg, egg base in it as well, okay. which is frozen custard versus ice cream. Frozen custard has eggs in it. French vanilla would actually be a frozen mm -hmm. custard. All right, a um, little bit of clouds out there uh, this morning and uh, there was a bit of drizzle. I think that's going to go away as we make our way into the afternoon. It cleared up very quickly yesterday and actually got to be a lot warmer. Uh, we were about 77, 78. So we'll see if that happens today. You know, I'm still keeping these temperatures down because that's uh, the forecast that I look at. Tomorrow we are looking for uh, some morning drizzle, more so than today. This is just more of a marine layer drizzle. Tomorrow, a good chance of real light rain, so measurable rain tomorrow. It's not going to be much, but it should be um, early in the morning and then maybe on until maybe about 10 o'clock or so. And then we're going to see less of that marine layer as we get to Sunday and Monday and things will start to warm up again. Around Orange County today and elsewhere, very similar to what we had yesterday. Not uh, much changes, and uh, Palm Springs still over 100 degrees, so their temperatures are quite normal for uh, right now, and uh, everywhere else we're still way below normal, below by probably about 5 degrees. Uh, Lake Arrowhead 67, uh, they're probably only off by a couple degrees, so uh, they're above this marine layer, so they're actually uh, pretty close to where they normally would be about this time of the year. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. What's my passion? Finding balance with every dance move. The sound of the ukulele, the, the softness. My son's nonverbal. 
but when he does talk, I need to be able to hear him. Hear well, stay vital. Hearing loss is linked to increased risk of dementia, depression, falls, and isolation. Stay engaged and keep doing what you love. Check your hearing wellness every year. Hello again, and welcome to another Roadshow segment of Doctor in the Dugout. I'm your host, Dr. Alan Beyer, and I'm thrilled to be joined today by one of my new partners and associates at both Newport Orthopedic Institute and Hogue Orthopedic Institute, Dr. Taylor Dunphy. Taylor, thanks for being here with us today. Thanks, Alan. I appreciate the invitation. Well, Taylor's joined our group now as another one of our cadre of sports medicine specialists. He's fresh out of his sports medicine fellowship training with another good friend of mine, Dr. Jim Taboni up at USC. How was that year fellowship experience for you up there? It was quite an amazing year. You basically learn from some of the experts in the field of sports medicine, and from that you get to go and actually practice on collegiate athletes and then athletes of all ages. So I think a lot of people who are seeking out treatment for a sports injury don't necessarily realize that you know, most of us who did sports medicine fellowships, including me back in the day, um, really learn a lot of the stuff that we're using to treat these people in on-the-field training. How important is the sideline aspect of your sports medicine training when you're taking care of these athletes? It's, I'd say it's paramount because you get to see the injury right in front of you. You get to evaluate them right away before swelling comes into play. And you get a good sense of what the ligaments are doing. As you wait longer and longer, then you get stiffer, for example. If you're on the field, you get a good Lockman, good exam to know what really is out. I'll tell you, it's really amazing, too, these days, how those of us who are sitting at home watching, at the pro level anyway, get to see these injuries occurring in 16 different angles, five different speeds. I mean, it really is kind of a, added a whole new ability to understand the forces that these athletes are being subjected to when they, when they get hit in a certain way. And it just is no longer pros. Even high school students now, I had a high school student come in last week with a video from him lacrosse injury as he broke his clavicle. So it's, it's influencing all areas of sports. Sometimes it's not always for the better either, as we'll get into in a little bit if we talk a little bit about concussions and things like that. So I think the other thing that I really would like to get across to our listeners is how today's sports medicine doctor who's fellowship trained is really looking to take care of athletes at all levels, from peewees and football, all the way up through major college and pros, and to the weekend warriors as we hit our 50s, 60s, 70s, and continues to continue to ab abuse our bodies in various ways. I mean, how are you able to take what you learn at the, the very high college and pro level and apply it to the public at large when they're just playing their recreational sports? Yeah, so the term sports medicine is often confusing to patients because these people you're seeing didn't actually injure themselves playing sports, but the injuries themselves are, quote unquote, can be caused by a sports injury. So if you come in with a 60 year old who's not playing football, he can also tear his rotator cuff or hurt his, his clavicle in the same way a professional football player could. So the principles apply to all ages and the management is just a little bit different between a pro and someone who's a weekend warrior. And I think we're also seeing a higher and higher incidence of the repetitive use kind of um, injuries and phenomena. I mean, for instance, the, the young pitcher who is needing Tommy John surgery at the age of 16 or 17 or 18 as opposed to the professional, these are repetitive use injuries, not just one-time traumatic injuries. We're seeing a real explosion in those in adolescence, aren't we? Exactly. There's these kids now are playing sports year-round, so the periods where they have used to have summer break or times off are now spent training. So you have these overuse injuries that are common in young age, also in older adults, people who are doing activities above head. Um, lifting things can also cause rotator cuff issues in a degenerative type of pattern. So you, you said something there that I want to amplify a little bit for our, our viewers, and that's the year-round aspect of things. Uh, we happen to live in a climate where you're able to avail yourself of outdoor activities, you know, 12 months a year. Uh, I grew up in a place in, in, back in the east in New York where you couldn't avail yourself of out-of-door stuff for almost half the year. Um, 
I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing, especially with our, with our youth. When a, a kid today is identified as being a pitching prospect, for instance, suddenly he's throwing January through December, whereas if he lived in New York or Connecticut or, or somewhere back east, he's not throwing at least at the same level out of doors 12 months a year. I mean, that's really turning out to be a bit of a double-edged sword, isn't it? Yeah, and as a role as a sports specialist, I try to counsel some of the parents most, more than, this, than the patients. Um, that there is a limit that these young athletes can handle. So if you're having shoulder issues, we usually slow them down, um, take a time off, and that'll actually make them feel much better. Rushing into surgery for a Tommy John is not necessarily needed for a lot of injuries. Just time and, and just decreasing the workload is very effective. I, I also think, unfortunately, the, the increasing financial pressure, uh, the increasing cost of going to a college, getting into a college that your parents want to get you into are suddenly putting all kinds of stresses on these kids that well maybe you saw when you grow up <laughs> I certainly didn't see when I grew up and I don't know that that's really a trend for the better exactly there's there's a long life ahead of these athletes so they gotta you gotta make sure that they're being safe um, concussions is one of those issues where the goal is to get back on the field as soon as possible but in reality we need to take our young patients first and look at their whole lifespan before we push them out in the field Let's talk about concussions for a minute or two before we move on to a couple other things. There's been so much stuff about it in the last couple of years at every level from the NFL on down. Um, we certainly treat the concussed athlete way differently than we did 20 or 30 years ago. I mean, it was almost a badge of courage 30 or 40 years ago to sustain a concussion in a football game and get back in there. We've gone 180 in the other direction now, haven't we? Exactly. And um, it's kind of a spectrum. NFL, most aggressive, high school level athlete, the most conservative. So if you have any symptoms of a headache or loss of consciousness, obviously, we would set you out definitely that game and you have to do a checklist of different activities in order to be cleared to play in the next week. So often these athletes are out for several weeks before they're ready to go back. And even at the pro level, we're seeing, you know, neurotrauma specialists at every NFL game, a concussion protocol, which is a totally new term that we never heard before at the, at the professional or collegiate level. If somebody gets significantly concussed, they've got to pass certain tests before, even at the professional level, they're allowed to go back in. Yeah, and the data is limited right now, but it's concerning with some of the studies out there. So everyone's taking it very seriously, and especially in the younger age, population, you got to be very conservative. And I think this applies to soccer too, with heading and head-to-head -head contact when two kids are going up for a headed ball. We're, we're certainly being more conservative in the concussion approach in soccer as well. Yeah, I was the team physician for USC women's soccer last year, and um, they had as many concussions as probably football players did. So it's, it's not just a football injury. At least they don't have a helmet on their head so they don't feel their head's a weapon like the football players sure. do. So let's talk a little bit about some of the stuff that you've learned. You're fresh out of your training. Tell us about some of the new things that are the newer things that are happening in the treatment of sports injuries, uh, specifically knee injuries, shoulder injuries. What, what, what's out there now that maybe wasn't available to us five or ten years so ago? So previously in the past, big incisions were the way of the, the game, if you will. Uh, but now everything is done essentially minimally invasive with the size of about a centimeter incision, several around the knee or around the shoulder. And using a camera and some arthroscopic tools, we're able to, to accomplish big surgeries in small little spaces. The major advantage to not having the big old incision like the old days is less soft tissue trauma, so the rehabilitation ostensibly should be faster. In some cases it is, but also you're still repairing it the same way. So you have to protect it, but the pain, the stiffness, some of the things that are complications in the past have now been improved. And I think we have to also keep in mind that we're doing these things for better outcomes, not for better cosmetic results. Because I think as much as we aim for a nice cosmetic result, those of us who do an orthopedic surgery, for the most part, cosmesis is not our number one priority. I agree with that. Okay, so how about some of the new things in treatment of cartilage injuries? There's a lot of stuff that's happened now, uh, some good, some bad. Let's talk a little bit about cartilage implantation, where we take a patient's own cartilage and culture it and re-implant it. Where, what's the state of the art today? It's pretty cutting edge. So if you have an isolated cartilage lesion, like basically it's a, a pothole in the pavement, uh, we can take your own cartilage in one surgery, send it to a lab, regrow it, make a sheet of tissue of your own cells and re-implant it. 
And that's actually shown to have some of the best results in these isolated cartilage lesions. But I think, like always, I think the key thing you said there is a pothole in the highway, not where the whole highway's surface has been absolutely disrupted. Because we see a lot of patients with significant arthritis who say, why can't you just grow new cartilage and, and put it back in for me? We're not there yet, are we? Science is not there for global arthritis. Uh, the gold standard is still a total knee replacement if you have arthritis in all areas of the knee. But if you have a isolated single lesion or two lesions, uh, some of this new technology is definitely the wave of the future. So we hear a lot now about two other things that I want to talk to uh, with our viewers a little bit about. PRP. What is PRP? When do you use PRP? What's the value of PRP? So PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. Essentially, it's your own blood spun down in a centrifuge to concentrate some of the growth factors. These growth factors have been shown to decrease some of the inflammation and tendons, and also they've been used in arthritis to de decrease some of the inflammation of the lining of the knee. So it decreases the inflammation, but doesn't grow new cartilage cells inside the knee. That's an important misconception, I think. True. So the PRP is just setting a good environment for the knee. It's not giving the cells that are needed to grow new cartilage. So let's go to the next step. Speaking of cells to grow new cartilage, stem cells are all the rage. You see, can't read a newspaper without seeing a full page ad about stem cell injections. Tell us where we're at right now. Is, it, is the time really here yet, or are we still kind of on the, the early adopter curve and we don't really know yet on stem cells? It is definitely on the early side, in my opinion. Um, you can, some people swear by them, but the data in large studies is not there yet. So we, the essence of a stem cell is you find it in a body. It can be from fat, it can be from bone marrow, and you have these cells with the potential to grow into cartilage or grow into certain tissue um, with the hope that this will help the arthritis that you have. Uh, but again, it's kind of the cutting, cutting early, early stages of this. So we don't really have any good data yet to show that stem cell injections can reverse an arthritic knee, grow new cartilage, and hopefully that patient avoids a knee replacement. Yeah, the advertisements you see probably are a little bit too good to be true, uh, but there is some data that's proving that in the future, hopefully we can have that technology work. Well, Taylor, I think this has been very elucidating for our viewers. Um, they can all reach out to us at orthopedichospital.com, the Hogue Orthopedic Institute website. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule, taking care of the peewees, taking care of the pros, taking care of the seniors, to clue us in a little bit as to what's going on, and, and we'll see you back here again soon, I hope. Thanks, Alan. I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Have a great one. We'll be doing some more of these episodes as time goes on, so stay tuned, and thanks a lot for being with us today. When you travel with AAA, you get more than a vacation. You get exclusive AAA member benefits, special offers on unforgettable experiences, and the travel planning knowledge of your own AAA travel agent. When you travel with AAA, you get the vacation of your dreams. To save on a pleasant holidays vacation, visit your local AAA travel agent today. And welcome back. With me right now is Dustin Arbuckle. He is with our social services department and a liaison with Saddleback Medical Center. We also have Susan Thomas here with the foundation of Laguna Woods Village. And welcome, both of you. Thank you, Great Ken. to have you both on. And uh, Dustin, you've been on, I think, once before. Once before. Right? Yep. So let's first talk about uh, the relationship between Memorial Care, uh, Saddleback Medical Center, Mm -hmm. And uh, here with our social service department, it's something that years ago uh, was done and, mm -hmm. and now you're doing this. So tell us about that, how that program yeah, works. Yeah, exactly. So I'm a, <clears throat> I'm a Saddleback Hospital social worker and I work in Laguna Woods Village Social Services mm -hmm. Department. 
And about 70% uh, of that position is doing just that, working with social services to uh, create a support system for residents, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, providing resources, referrals, uh, problem solving, and really getting to understand um, how to best address the needs of Laguna Woods Village. Right, and of course you bring um, you know, your past experience here, and then you uh, go back to Saddleback and you kind of mm -hmm. work with them. And, and, and exactly. so it's a real partnership about, you kind of communicate to them what yep. is needed here. Yep, and it, they, that's the key, and that's in that understanding of, yeah. of working with the population of Laguna Woods, and then taking it back to do that other 30% of the position, yeah. which is working with Saddleback administrators to create the most age-friendly health system possible, uh, as well as uh, program development, yeah. which is kind of yeah. what brings us here. Now, uh, when, you, when you have this partnership here, are you sort of on loan to us for a certain amount of time, or is, is it more of a permanent position? It's permanent, yep, full-time, yep, 40 hours a week. All yeah. right, very good. Now, uh, the reason, Susan, you're here today is uh, you folks, or both of you together, are gonna be talking about this fall prevention program coming up. Right. Uh, Saddleback, or excuse me, had the um, foundation of Laguna Woods Village, of course, a lot of people know help people in need. It's done um, anonymously. And most of the time, you get uh, your information from social services. Correct. Yeah. Um, we, we're partnered with social services. Mm -hmm. um, we provide, as the foundation, the funding, and they tell us yeah. who's in need and where the funding should go. Mm -hmm. We raise funds. We're a philanthropic organization. Yeah. Um, sometimes people get us mixed up with the Golden Rain Foundation, but we're the philanthropic organization. Right. So that's really important. We're very excited about working with Justin on the fall prevention program because it, it, in fact, impacts all citizens it of does. Laguna Woods Village. And we as the foundation want to be a, a part of the village and to impact all residents. Mm -hmm. of the, and the fall prevention program is something that has happened before but what Justin has put together is unique yeah. and it very impactful to the village. Yeah, and Dustin, I think what's unique about this is as you know, the social services have had these programs before, but I don't think the foundation was ever involved mm -hmm. that I can recall. Yeah, it's kind of a new development in the partnership between Saddleback Hospital, Laguna Wood Social Services, and the foundation. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So it's a new development. Um, the class itself is called uh, a balancing act. Uh, and it's, a, uh, it's an eight session class. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be four of them. It's led by Memorial Care Physical Therapy and it's, oh, it's great. specifically yeah. for Laguna Woods Village residents. You don't have to be low income. So it's because falls are such a global issue, okay. we're opening That's it up. That's what I was gonna ask because yeah. the foundation is usually associated with people who are low income or have temporary needs. Well, we impact all residents, things yeah. like the Braille Institute mm -hmm. and um, hearing issues and right. um, finding ways to, to help citizens of the village in every way. Right. So Dustin, this is gonna start uh, in, did you say September or September, August? September, okay. yep, it's September 6th. Okay. It will be the first, um, first fall class. It's on Friday and it's uh, in uh, Clubhouse 5 Fitness Center. It's from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, but before that, uh, there's also this uh, dimension to the program that is uh, it's separate from the classes. You don't have to register for it. Uh, and it's this educational component. And that the first one will be in August, on August okay. 28th. So do these classes that are going to be happening once they, they start in September, is it twofold, meaning folks are going to sit down and kind of talk about uh, uh, go through where here's the things that you can do to prevent falls within your your home and your everyday life in addition to that how to get up be physically fit and know how to balance yourself is a little bit of both yeah so the physical okay. therapist uh, this is something they've been doing for a long time yeah so uh, it's 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 definitely that got that exercise component yeah you know I actually did I, I participated in it once um, my hips were burning by the end of it, <laughs> and, um, uh, but it was fun. Yeah. Uh, it's, so it's exercise, but it's also it, it's, it's educational how to get up right. after a fall yeah. as well. Now, Susan, of course, um, you know, one of the, the worst things as we get older are falls. Absolutely. People may not think, oh, it's just a fall. I've fallen, you know, if you fall and you're 10 years old, 
Okay, so you big up. deal, you bounce up. Even when you're 20 and 30, but as you get a little bit older, you don't. And the fall itself uh, may not be the most debilitating part of it, it's the after effects of it. Not only just the physical part, but the mental part, right? Absolutely, um, and in fact, we have some personal experiences, both of us, that yeah. we, we want to bring out that yeah. show that. And um, my father, unfortunately, he loved to help the family, carried the groceries through the back door, yeah. tripped, fell, broke his neck, never recovered. So the after effect of that one right. was death. And it was, yeah. um, and one of my neighbors has uh, storage in an attic, got up on a ladder. In fact, I think generally we know ladders are a no-no for yeah. us. Yeah. I won't even step on a two-step ladder anymore. Right. Because the ladders, yeah. you don't realize it, but it can be a small fall, but the impacts can be tremendous because mm -hmm. of what happens later. Yeah, yeah, and I also do have a personal connection. My fiance's father actually had a pretty bad fall uh, recently, and it's it was totally debilitating. It's and it, it it's it's something that I bring uh, an experience I bring to uh, all the families that I meet mm -hmm. with because I see all the falls that happen that go to Saddleback Hospital. In every uh, family meeting, I, I'm kind of bringing that experience. I know yeah. that families this could be the hardest thing they've ever gone through. Right, and I know when my uh, my mom has since passed away years ago, but that happened to her. Yeah, you know, she she slipped on the dog's water bowl, and you know down she went and broke a hip, and then uh, a couple years later she fell again because she was trying to catch herself from falling. Uh, you know, you become more timid. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, lots so. of broken wrists and other broken parts right. of the body. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. And it's the, the yeah. fear of falling, actually. It, it causes isolation right. and it, it can and make it so people don't get out and be as active, which yeah. can cause falls. Well, um, I know we're, uh, uh, Susan's going to send up, not you, Susan, but the <laughs> Susan from Social Services is going to, you're making up a flyer that you'll, uh, yeah, you yeah. folks will send up to us. So we'll I'll obviously tell you more about this. And um, we should have uh, you folks back on maybe in Absolutely. August to sort of uh, yeah. get people oh, well. back in tune with this, that this would be happening. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Very Ken. good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to see you again, Dustin. Meet you. Take care, and we'll be right back. All righty. Yeah, that'll be good. Get the flyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If you asked me what I wanted to be when I was a child, I would have told you a princess or an astronaut, maybe even a chef, but things change. I may not have become a princess, but I found someone who treated me like one. I may not have become an astronaut, but I still got to see the world. I may not have become a chef, but you would never leave my house hungry. The Emeritus Institute has kept my love of learning alive. Every day is a new adventure, and the Emeritus classes have made it possible to keep living out my dreams. Sign up today and begin your life's next adventure. Before I tell you what I'm about to tell you, let me tell you that it's very important that you listen to what I'm going to tell you. Looking good, Albert. The people have spoken. They want a man of action. Mmm. Real gold? They want a leader who will stare boredom in the face and say, not on my watch. Insert me, Rob Riggle, the new mayor of Funner, California. It's not a word, it's a place. Funner! Hey, Laguna Woods, it's Ken. And Lisa. Did you miss an episode of this day? Not to worry, head over to youtube.com and search Village Television. Here you can find each episode of This Day and other community programs such as Good Day OC, Discovering Laguna Woods, and much more. Just click the red subscribe button, then click the bell to be emailed every time we upload a video. Don't miss out. And subscribe today. Hi, I'm Sharon. I am so pleased to welcome you to JTV. We're a 24-7 home shopping network focused exclusively on jewelry and gemstones. And because we believe every woman deserves to be lifted up, we love to help her sparkle, keep her informed, and make her smile. Our viewer is passionate about jewelry and gemstones, and we share her passion. Because of that, she keeps coming back, making us one of the top retailers in the United States. We sell extraordinary products at extraordinary prices. Welcome to JTV.
The Red Sox are one out away. And the Dodgers are down to their final strike. Here comes a 1-2 pitch. Red Sox win the World Series! And the best team in baseball wins it all. Welcome back. With me right now from the Golden Girls Dance Troupe is Anna Shu, And uh, we were just talking that she gets involved with so many different things in this community. But this is a big one that's coming up on June 29th. And welcome. Good to see you again. Thank you. Yeah, Always good to good see to have you. Here. Yeah, thank and, you. And uh, this is something you folks have been working on for quite a while. It's your uh, one of your two big performances. I think you usually do one. Yeah. Around the holidays, I mean, right? Right, right. Yeah, so, but this one is, is a big one, right? Yeah, we have two performances on June 29th uh, at 2 o'clock and mm -hmm. 7, 7 o'clock because some, some seniors prefer to come out uh, right. uh, yeah, during the day instead of uh, in the darkness. So that's why we, we did. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. Are doing, yeah and so tell me about this. We got a, a, um, some video we're going to uh, roll up. But this is a series of really many, many different things, different kinds of dances and presentations, traditional stuff, and some non-traditional as well, right? Right, yeah. right. So yeah, as we talk through, then uh, you will see that uh, we, we really strive for bringing the variety of the, of the shows. And uh, so and uh, first, we are going to start with a drum dance which is uh, quite exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, that is a thing that uh, we have uh, done, we were invited to do at uh, Oscar night. Uh, yeah. yeah, this year, which is uh, February 24th. And you do this, yeah. right? Oh, I, I was drums? part, I, yeah, yeah. We, we did. And yeah. we are going to do this dance as well uh, in this show. And we start with this show. And the, the name of the dance is uh, Awakening the Spring. And oh, uh, wow. yeah, it's just because yeah. the, the uh, the sound of the the drum is uh, very like thunderly right, and awakes are, yeah. people awakes the spring awakes uh, the earth uh, from the winter yeah so it's uh, it's very exciting and uh, the audience will immediately get started you know uh, in the mood so, now you know we're looking at some of this stuff here. Yeah. yeah, I like this one because yes. show everyone what you have on your hand. Yeah, so this is the Thousand Hand Buddha. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, the Buddha uh, is a female, a yeah. Guanyin Buddha. And that has thousand hands and a thousand eyes, just like this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, each, each, ha uh, each hand has a palm. Uh, has an eye on the palm. Okay. So, so uh, Buddha has, uh, Guan Yin Buddha has a thousand hands and thousand eyes. With thousand eyes, she watches all over the world. And with thousand hands, and she protects us, helps us, and uh, help all the beings on the earth. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, thousand in Chinese has a, has a meaning of infinity, completeness, Thoroughness. Okay. And uh, with thousand eyes, she watches us, and with thousand hands, she protects us and bring us the good fortune and uh, uh, you know, yeah, a, pros a prosperous business. Yeah, I've yeah. heard. Um, you know, you mentioned a thousand. You hear that a lot. And yeah. So isn't there like the thousand year old egg and things like that? Uh, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not well, really in, in this old, case, yeah. In yeah. this case, a thousand. Uh, you know, Chinese has a lot of uh, metaphors. Yeah. Sometimes right. number three or multiples of three will means uh, infinity or multiple okay. uh, a lot. Uh, so abundance. Uh, so in thousand really means infinity, wow. completeness, and thoroughness. Now, so. as far as the performances here, we have this guy. This yes. is very. This is the part that's not traditional. This is not traditional, <laughs> and uh, she is. Uh, her name. His name is Ramje, and uh, she is uh, a tribute artist to Michael Jackson. Yeah. And uh, well, actually, this uh, video, you know, I specifically selected from you know uh, from YouTube to show people that. 
He's a very, very good uh, impersonator. Does he live yeah. um, in this area? He lives area? In, in, in LA area. Oh, okay. Yeah, we met him actually in the Oscar night uh, this uh, last Feb February. And he looks so real and it almost feels like uh, scary because uh, when he stands by you and, oh, is this a dead person? Because he looks so, so real. <laughs> and with his dance, yeah. it's so impressive. Uh, now, as well. So I, you know, I'm looking at all the folks here. How many people are, are in this show? I mean, it just seems like you have several dozen. Uh, well, uh, indeed, way, indeed. Yeah. So with the uh, Golden Girls Dance Troupe, we have about uh, 15, okay. uh, around 15 dancers, and uh, but the families of the dancers also join, jump in to help. Okay. Yeah, all and right. it really involves a lot of people. This at the one same time, here, it looks spectacular. Yeah, well, uh, I have to tell that uh, this is the banana uh, raindrops on the banana leaves uh, uh -huh. uh, dance. And you see the, the green yes. uh, umbrella? That actually means the banana leaves, symbolize oh, the banana okay. leaves. And uh, uh, I have to say that uh, that we, we are doing this dance the first time. So I have to show to the audience how the dance looks like from uh, a YouTube or something right, like that. Right. So, it's uh, yeah, the, yeah it, it is beautiful yeah. dance and we have practiced hours and hours for that dance. Now, so. where do you practice? Because you need a lot of room for that. Do you, are you doing it at the Performing Arts Center when you have a chance yes, on the stage? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, there is a rehearsal room right. uh, that is sized just like the stage and uh, we practice six hours each wow. week. And uh, Amy Ren, our coach, is very strict uh, about uh, the dance moves. Yeah. That not only you have to do it right, but also you have to do it beautifully. Because, right. you right. know, we want to treat our audience and, uh, uh, you know, uh, bring the enjoyment to yeah. them. That's the, and that's it looks the, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Now, as you said, there's going to be two performances, and this is on... June 29th, yes. and either at 2 o'clock or at 7 o'clock, yeah. and uh, the performances are about two hours long in the Performing Arts Center. Two hours out, yeah. Two and they can buy tickets long. there. Yes, right okay. now the tickets are available. And uh, so, and uh, it's worth to mention another dance is called Red Lantern Dance. And uh, the Red mm -hmm. Lantern is a Chinese artifact. Art, art a craft okay. that uh, we often light up uh, during the you know Chinese New Year mm -hmm. celebration and uh, the lunar Chinese New Year uh, calendar January the 15th is the lantern festival right on the day we eat a specialty Chinese food uh, uh, that's a dessert uh, it's a small ball mm -hmm. and uh, with a sweet fillings okay and it can be a variety of fillings and uh, so that symbolizes the reunion of the family and brings the good fortune and pros prosperous uh, business for the year. So, and that festival actually uh, pushes the, the celebration of the Chinese New Year to a high. Okay. And yeah, so that is, uh, and the Red Lantern is often, uh, you know, people light up and right. hang on, on their home for uh, you know celebration yeah. and uh, this dance actually presents a picture of the Chinese young girls having fun with the red lantern uh, during the night and uh, very playful and enjoyable. All know? right this so. is going to be an excellent performance so again this is uh, June 29th and uh, that's either at two o'clock or at seven o'clock and that is am i right is that saturday it is a saturday right saturday or sunday saturday yeah i'm maybe. trying to think yeah. ahead of uh, my calendar yeah. what's that saturday, saturday. <laughs> all right thanks uh but uh, definitely enjoy this you know this has been uh, you've done this uh before in the past you didn't have the michael jackson guy yeah and some of these other performances we we do we brought him over oh you did do. yeah okay. so uh you know the particular particular but you haven't video. had him before right we haven't had yeah, him that's before what I, yeah first time that's to see what this. you meant yeah All and right. you know what the youtube video i showed here yeah. had 8.2 million views wow and he is uh, he has dazzled audience in Southern California and in Las Vegas. Well, check this so out. that's a lot of fun. Again, it's coming up Saturday, June 29th. Tickets are available at the Performing Arts Center. Anna, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Take care, good yeah, to see you. It's fun. We'll be back.
with Alzheimer's disease, you never know what to expect. Dr. Gus Alva at ATP Clinical Research is enrolling volunteers 65 to 90 years old for a clinical research study evaluating an investigational drug for agitation associated with Alzheimer's disease. No charge to participate and compensation for time and travel may be available. If you or someone you know is experiencing agitation, irritability, or aggression associated with Alzheimer's disease, visit atpcr.com or call 714-270-1472. Ray and I are standing in front of a digital sign that, that we hope serves as a deterrent against speeding vehicles and, and also uh, just to make our residents uh, aware of their speed wherever they may be. We, we try to position these uh, throughout our community uh, around curves, um, in downhill sections, and, and again, it just uh, to remind our folks to, to take it easy, to watch the posted speed limit. And, and as you can see here on this one, the, the posted speed limit is uh, 25 miles an hour. And Ray, I'm sure that you, you see quite a few uh, speeding violations uh, in your traffic hearings. Uh, absolutely. We, could put, we have an average of like 14 people in the morning and they come in for traffic, and at least three of the 14 are there for speeding. Here was a... Uh, speeding vehicle, I believe, uh, driving 37 in a 25, which is excessive. Now, this was a straightaway, but and that that is unsafe. Uh, just add the additional conditions of maybe it's it's dark out, poor lighting, uh, the roadways are are wet. You're on a curb, you're coming downhill. There's pedestrians out. There's a variety of of issues that uh, we need to take into consideration. Of bottom line is, let's let's take it nice and slow. Um, be aware of your surroundings. Again, know your limitations. Um, when, you're, when you're driving fast, you need to be uh, recognize that your ability to brake is going to be severely impacted as well. This one is going to be a challenge for me. Everything's moving 100 miles an hour. This is your worst nightmare. Get out! Please bring your dish forward. Master Chef. Wednesdays or watch anytime on demand or Fox Now. Welcome back. Erica Ritchie has returned and she's got some great Globe headlines as well as a really nice story. I appreciate you bringing all of this wonderful information to us. And again, congratulations to you on your award. Thank you very much. Tell me, just give us a brief example of who you met when you went out to D.C. Yeah, so um, I had a really interesting experience. They asked me, do I want to meet the vice president? And I was looking around everywhere for Vice President Pence, and it was actually Dick Cheney. So That's that was awesome. that was a really awesome opportunity. And the villagers may remember Dick Cheney from his um, his era with the Bush administration. Exactly. Well, congratulations. Thank you for that. All right, what Thank do we you. got today? Yeah. So we have a fun story about uh, the elder villagers who were honored this week. There was the 90th luncheon, right? And um, apparently, eight centurions turned up for that, including uh, Antoinette Mullen who was the oldest at 106, yay okay. Antoinette. Good for her. And um, and yeah, and so they were served chicken florentine and ha- had a really great time. And apparently 40 to 50 veterans also of World War II um, attended as well. So that's, that's a very, um, very unique uh, gathering of people and um, good for them that they're you know, all doing well and hopefully we'll be back next year to celebrate. Yes, yes. And then um, in some other interesting news, we've got, so um, Saddleback Memorial Hospital, if you're going there anytime soon, um, and hopefully for good things too, it's not always a bad thing to go to the hospital, but uh, two sisters in Laguna Woods Village um, have left a seven-figure endowment to the hospital. Basically, with the money that they left, they were able to create these terrariums, and so people are able to go around in kind of this really tranquil setting. There's like grasses, 
and uh, bushes and small trees, potted plants. So it's kind of a nice place to relax if you're mm -hmm. visiting the hospital for a procedure or if you're visiting a, you know, a relative that might be there. And um, so basically these terrariums were um, created by their money mm -hmm. and, um, and were de um, unveiled on May the 6th. Okay. So, um, so that's really a neat thing. The sisters will re be remembered. Sadly, they passed. Um, Colleen passed in 2006 and um, uh, uh, Colleen and her sister's name, as, and I'm sorry, I'm blanking on that, was Doreen. I knew it was lean and lean, two <laughs> and E's in there. Uh, she she died in 2016, okay. but their their memory will live on with That's this nice. um, contribution at the hospital. So if people are there, you might want to check it out. Um, then in other news, at the third mutual board um, this week uh, had some several resolutions. One of which included what you can can or cannot do with your sunshade. In the past, sunshades were, um, so basically the roll-up sunshades that you oh, lower in yeah. front of your windows on the external side. In the past, um, residents were not allowed to have sunshades. They had to be straight. Mm -hmm. And so now they've um, amended that in basically any kind of a decorative sunshade that has scalloped edges or something more fancy going on will be allowed. So oh. that might be an opportunity for villagers to do some renovations this summer and um, get something a little bit more uh, summery and flirty on their windows All instead right. of instead of kind of doll up the place. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> instead of what they have now. Um, and then, of course, we've got the um, closures on the five freeway. They've mm. started the project, and that project is um, due to be completed in 2025. It's a 581 million dollar project, and they've started with some of the closures on the five freeway between Oso and uh, Alicia Parkway. Oh. So, I mean, as the project continues, obviously that's going to be a little bit of a problem this summer with traffic. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, in the end, hopefully it will improve things and and ease congestion here in in this area around yeah. the the um, five interchange. Uh, so that's that um, as far as um, some of the news in the globe. Then, um, as f some fun stories that I've been writing about uh, since I returned was a story at one of my favorite places to talk about, uh, the Pacific Marine Mammal Center. Mm -hmm. And they have started a program called Sea Lions for Service. Okay. And so basically, um, so far, it's, um, it's being done for veterans and veterans who have recently returned from um, combat. And the sea line, basically the veterans go to the center and they watch and see how the sea lions are treated. They help with tube feeding. They see the sea lions coming in and, um, and help with uh, fish preparation, counting out the fish, etc. And basically the idea is kind of that sea lions are coming out of their natural environment and are doing well and thriving and healing at the Pacific Marine Mammal okay. Center, which of course is foreign to them just like some of the veterans that we have who've served in combat come back and feel like it's very difficult to get back into the regular world, right? And, right. and so, so, they're, so they're, the officials at PMMC are hoping that this kind of transitional program with the marine mammals will be something that helps the sea lions. And I did speak with an Air Force veteran, combat veteran. He was a firefighter, paramedic, who had a lot of horror stories and was, mm. you know, suffered from PTSD and traumatic brain injuries. And he loved the program so much that he is now an, um, an official volunteer at the Pacific okay. Green Mammal Center. He volunteers okay. there on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to come meet him, he is there on Tuesdays okay. and um, just loves the program. So that's the success story already starting out. Yeah. And that's a yeah. brand new program. Brand new program. Okay. Just started. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. And so then lastly, we've got our letters All and right. we are very, very excited and happy to report that we've had a full page of letters again. All right. And um, just to make sure that I am exactly clear on the letter, I will <laughs> put my glasses on to make sure I'm reading it right. Um, so the letter topics this week included a warning about a p computer scam, mm. appreciation of the fitness center staff, a letter in support of shared cost concept, and then another one that was fuming over cable fees. So oh, we had sure. one little ding there, but you know, it's always good to get that out. You know, if you don't squawk about it, you don't get changes, right? So. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Got to be the squeaky wheel right. sometimes. That, that's yeah, no, right, I right, know. right. You don't bring awareness <laughs> up. You don't, you don't get improvements. So, um, so this is the letter that we got from Sonia Appel, 
and she says, I've lived in the community for 15 years and I've been in the community center many times. The staff has always been friendly and polite. They always treated me with respect and was, I was always impressed with the patience in explaining the situation I was concerned about. I have no complaints whatsoever. So we're nice. very happy to get that um, that one. letter about the about the uh, community center and um, good. the good work that they do. So That's that great. is my um, report for today. All right. Well, a shout out to the first floor. Yeah. You know, and everybody in our, in our building. That's great. And I saw a bunch of people actually heading that way as I came in today. So. Yeah, it is super busy. I yeah. mean, I think the you know the weather later and the, when it's sunny is bringing all sorts right. of things out. So good. Well, thank yeah. you very much for the yeah. report. You're welcome. Nice to have you all back. All right. Thank you very much. And remember, you can always get your copy of The Globe, and this is today, look at that cute lady on the phone, she's adorable, um, on the first floor of the Community Services Building on Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. We'll be right back. Looking for a change of scenery? You don't have to play golf to enjoy all that 19 Restaurant and Lounge has to offer. From a delicious breakfast menu to our delectable lunch and dinner specials. At 19 Restaurant and Lounge, there is something for everyone. Relax with your friends and family and take in the beautiful view from our spacious patio. Or enjoy a cocktail and appetizer in our lounge. 19 Restaurant and Lounge is a great place to socialize, enjoy a meal, or simply take in the view. Join us seven days a week and experience Laguna Woods' exclusive dining experience. I'm Wendy Miller, your Smiley Realtor with Remax and your Laguna Woods Real Estate Specialist. I'm here today with the first of my seven home selling tips for seniors. Some seniors prefer to rely on the real estate agent who has sold the most properties in their neighborhood. Others seek the most often recommended from family and friends. The right professional will ask questions about your future goals. He or she will help you decide upon a realistic listing price and answer all of your questions promptly before asking you to sign a listing agreement. Give me a call and I will help you make the right move. Hello Laguna Woods, I would like to invite you to watch our new television show called Inspiration for Today. It's on every weekday morning right here on Channel 6 at 7.30 a.m. Saddleback Church of Laguna Woods hopes to start your day with encouraging stories, inspirational music, and lots of laughs too. Remember, Saddleback Church meets weekly in Clubhouse 5 at 9 and 11. We would love to serve you a free breakfast and have you join with us for worship. Welcome back. So Friday movie, we have Fighting With My Family. Uh, although, is February part of the title or? I'm no, not, I, I, I think don't know that's, that's the graphic there. that I took because oh. that was their poster. Oh, I see. Fighting With the Family February. must have been yeah. come out in February. Yeah. All right, so that'll be our uh, Friday movie at 2 and 7. And it stars Dwayne Johnson, Lena Headey, and Vince Vaughn. A former wrestler and his family make a living performing at small venues around the country while his kids dream of joining world wrestling entertainment. Interesting. It's, it's a biography, so it's got some relevance. Yeah, I think and it does. And it's a comedy and drama. And again, that'll be on Friday at 2 and 7 p.m. All right. And our Monday movie is uh, kind of a holiday movie, The Grinch. We all know The Grinch. This is the uh, latest uh, one that came out in November. Really good movie. Uh, we saw this. In fact, every year my daughter, I give her an advent calendar. Oh, yeah. And this year it was The Grinch. Oh, cute. And it was really one of the better ones that uh, she's ever gotten. So they're a lot of fun. Of course, you know the classic story of uh, The Grinch. And um, this was first brought out by Dr. Seuss years ago. And uh, it was, uh, I think in the 1960s was the first uh, animated one that was mm -hmm. done by Chuck Jones, famous Chuck Jones, who did Bugs Bunny and all that. And it's, uh, there was a live action version that came on, and this is the latest one. And I think they really uh, did very good. They tweaked the story a little bit. Okay. Uh, but I really like this a lot. And it stars uh, Benedict Cumberbatch as the voice of the Grinch. So mm -hmm. really good. It's a fun story. It's about an hour and 25 minutes long. And I like this one done by Illumination. And they're the same folks who do the Minions. 
and oh. Despicable Me. So oh. it's that type of animation. Okay, that's good. I yeah. like that. that yeah, great. they did an excellent job. I really did enjoy this. Sounds good. All right, Very perfect. good. So that's the Monday movie. Good. And you got something about what, the American Legion? Yeah, the American Legions uh, today is, um, yes, today. Oh, no, excuse me. You have a week to go. It's next Thursday, which is great. Uh, so if you would like to join them for their monthly dinner, it is next Thursday, June 27th. So you got a week at 5 o'clock in the main dining room at Clubhouse mm -hmm. One. And they have a wonderful menu. The cost is $15 per person. The program is Hawaiians at Heart. So if you are okay. interested, and this is a good way, uh, perhaps um, you'd always thought about uh, joining the American Legion. This is post 257. They've been around for over 50 years here. This would be really nice for you to get to know okay. folks and join them. So please call um, Jackie Yancer at 949-228-2744 for reservations no later than uh, next Wednesday, the 26th. So uh, you can go online to find um, the American Legion Post 257. Mm -hmm. And you can have coconut cream pie. I saw yeah. that in That's there. That's right. Like, that looked pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, how is our yeah, weather? Is it look, looking pretty good? The food looks fantastic. It does. It really does. How's I our love weather? That. Is it looking pretty good? Yeah, you know, it is. Yesterday we cleared up much quicker than I thought, and we yeah. got about five degrees warmer than Excellent. I thought we would. So we'll see about today. A little bit of drizzle out uh, this morning, which is fine. It kind of waters all my vegetable garden. Uh, tomorrow we are looking at uh, a chance of actual rain coming in early Friday morning and mm. maybe uh, uh, lasting to around 9, 10 o'clock. It's not going to be heavy, but it's going to be a little bit more measurable rain. This is really marine layer drizzle. Yeah. So uh, tomorrow it's supposed to be more so. And uh, then as we get to Sunday and Monday, you can see it'll clear up more, we'll get a little bit wow. less of that June clune and warm up to more normal temperatures. Oh, well, I'm, I'm happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> All good. I'm yeah, and here we are sun. around Orange County and elsewhere today. Um, again, Palm Springs and Arrowhead, because they're so far out there, aren't feeling the effects of this fog. So they're, mm -hmm. they're right about where they should be this time of year, but everywhere else is down by probably a good five degrees. Yeah, good. The June gloom is normal, but Right. The temperature But it's not. burning off at a reasonable rate. So, yeah. perfect. Okay, so tomorrow on our show, we're going to have United Mutual Update, a Sterling Financial, and then we've got the City Council Meeting Report. So have a great day in the village, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.